Here we're going to look at inequalities. And uh, first of all, I want to refer to this inequality here, y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5. Before in the past, what you would do is you would just simply graph this parabola. And then after you'd graph the parabola, and solid because of the fact that it's equals, you'd then plug in a test point to determine which way to shade in. A test point to see if you would shade inside or outside the parabola. Well, this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take away this grid, and we're just going to graph what's on the number line. So consider this is your grid, and this grid goes away. What we have essentially just a one-dimensional graph, this number line. We're also going to kind of take away this graph here as well. So what you'll have simply is just the overlap with the number line. So if that goes away, it'll just be this little linear inequality. So essentially, what you're going to be asked is, what is the domain of values that satisfies this inequality? Let's take this problem, for example. Because we don't have a y, the steps in which we would use to solve this is going to be a bit different. So let's first worry about the fact that, since we don't have a y, then we'll worry about 0. Let's set the right-hand side equal to 0. What that means is that you'll minus 6 from both sides. Once you've done that, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to factor that left-hand side. And you want to do it fully so that it becomes essentially uh, components grouped together through multiplication. In other words, we want a product. After you've factored it, then what we want to do is we want to concentrate on those two binomials. Set them both equal to 0 and solve for x. So for x minus 3, you have x equals 3. And notice I'm using equals. We're not going to worry about the arrow right now. And we have x equals negative 2. These are our boundary points in that on the number line, we're going to have circles at 3 and at negative 2. And these are open circles because there's no equal sign here. The purpose of this really is just to divide this line up into different pieces. So we have 1, 2, 3 regions. And negative 2 and 3 are our boundaries. OK. Now we have these boundaries. I've erased them at the moment. Let's test each region for the shading. So what that means is this. OK, we, we've got our boundaries back here. Looks a little bit prettier. I've listed the two binomials, x minus 3 and x plus 2. What you want to do is you want to plug in a number in this region, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, whichever, into this product. And what I'm really doing is I'm just simply listing them so that way we can make a nice little table here. Our interest is not what the product actually is, but whether or not it's less than 0. In other words, is it negative? Is the answer going to be negative or positive? Let's say we try negative 3. If you were to replace negative 3 in for x, you would get negative 6. In other words, you would get negative. And that's all we really care about. Is it going to be negative or not? If you replace negative 3 in for x, you have to ask yourself, negative 3 plus 2, is the answer negative or positive? negative. Now, we don't care about the actual numbers because, again, 0 is the, is the major number here we're worried about. Since this is negative and this is negative, think, is a negative times a negative going to wind up being less than 0? And the answer is no. When you multiply them together, you get a positive answer, which means this. None of our solutions go here. Let's try a number between negative 2 and 3, say 0. If you replace 0 here, 0 minus 3 is a negative answer. 0 plus 2 is a positive answer. So now, ask yourself again, self, if you have a negative and you multiply to a positive, what's the answer you get? The answer is negative, which means this. This is part of our solution set, and we're going to be shading in here. Let's go ahead and do that. So shade in. Now the question is that region on the right-hand side.
do we shade in here as well? So let's try a number in this region, say 5. And by the way, I'm just choosing 5 arbitrarily. You can really choose any number in this region. You can try one. In fact, let's, let's be uh, really out there. Let's try 1,000. 1,000 take away 3. The answer is positive. And 1,000 plus 2 is really positive. So then, again, you must ask yourself, self, does a positive times a positive give us a negative? No, it gives us a positive. Again, we want negative because this says less than 0. And numbers less than 0 are, in fact, negative. So that's what you're looking for. And that tells you whether or not to shade in. So this is our answer. OK. Now let's just simply write our solution. We'll write it as an inequality or in interval notation. When writing this in, as an inequality, you just simply put the two n numbers. Put x in the middle and have your arrows face towards the left. Or you can uh, write it as an interval, and with the interval, first number, last number, and then parentheses because of the fact that no equal signs. Here's another. Let's use the same steps. First, let's set the right-hand side to 0. It is tempting, by the way, it is tempting simply to just start with this and to have 2 be our basis for uh, doing the sign chart. However, you'd be making a very big mistake. We want 0 over here. 0 is what makes the train go chew. So subtract your 2 over. Now, what made the last problem work was the fact that we had a product or a quotient. In other words, we didn't have any adding or subtracting going on. And here, what you have is two big terms, this fraction and this 2. So what we want to do is we want to make this one big ginormous term or fraction. So what we're going to do is multiply 2 here to get a common denominator. So using x plus 2, we get this. Because we have a common denominator, place the whole thing all over x plus 2. Go ahead and distribute and then collect your terms. And that's what we get. So nice one big fraction. And now we're ready for the next step. Factor. You'll notice though there's really nothing to factor. I mean, this is already a binomial. This is already a binomial. So consider that step done. So now just let's just set these two binomials equal to 0. The top one, negative x minus 4, if you set that equal to 0, you should get negative 4. If you set x plus 2 equal to 0, you should get negative 2. OK, and with that, now we are ready to graph. Let's go ahead and move this up a bit. So there's our sign chart, negative 4 and negative 2. Now, because of the equal sign, we would make these solid dots, except the negative 2 is not going to be solid. Normally, that would be the case. But consider, what if x were negative 2 down here? What we would have, then, is we'd have an undefined fraction. Because of that, we can't have it equal 0 here, despite the fact that the sign says equals. OK, so now we have our three regions. Let's go ahead and test each region by choosing numbers within the region. Over here, to the left of negative 4, can be any value, whether it be negative 5 or negative 6. How about we try negative 5? So negative 5 plugged in here would be minus a negative 5. And then if you take that answer and subtract 4, we get an answer that's positive. If you choose negative 5 here, same number, you get a negative answer. Now in this particular case, you'll notice that we are dividing here, but whether you're timesing or dividing, it's still the same thing. So we don't really need to know the value, only if it's positive or negative. So a positive divided by a negative gives us a negative answer. Now, is negative what we want? Let's go back to this. We have less than 0. Less than 0 is negative. So that's exactly what we want. Therefore, you're going to want to shade in this region. I'll just do this for now, just so that way we know. OK, let's do the same thing for this region. Any number between negative 4 and negative 2, 
Negative 3 seems like a very likely number, but again, you can choose whatever you like, even negative pi if that floats the boat for you. So negative 3, plug that in, answer is negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is also negative, and a negative divided by a negative is positive. Again, that's not what we want. Therefore, we know not to shade in this region. And then a number east of negative 2 to finish off. How about we try 0? 0 minus 4 is negative. 0 plus 2 is positive. Negative divided by positive is negative. Hey, that's what we want. So therefore, we would shade in that region as well. So that's what we get. OK. Now from here, all you got to do is just simply write your solution. Write it as an inequality or an interval notation. Now notice that there's a gap, so what you would do is you would simply write that x is less than or equal to negative 4. You'd also write x is greater than negative 2, and then for the gap, you just put or, because it's either this way or that way. We can't be both simultaneously. If you're going to write it in interval notation, then that's how we'd frame it. This part would be from negative infinity to negative 4. That's the lower bound. That's the upper bound. And because it's a solid dot, we use a bracket to denote equals. For the gap, we use a u for union or united. And then negative 2 to positive infinity. OK, so that's really it. Now, I want to introduce one more idea, and that is this. Let's say we had worked out a problem, and we came out with this solution to the, to the inequality. Well, how do you write this answer? Well, obviously, we want to uh, account for this, uh, united, this, this unioned part here. So that's a combined inequality. So there we go for that part, 2, negative 3. We have an equal sign for the solid dot no equal sign for the open circle. But we also have to consider the 4. We don't just ignore it. Yes, it's just a dot. Yes, we didn't shade in here or here. But that's OK. We still need to denote the fact that we got 4 for an answer. So that's what you put. If you're using interval notation, then that's how you'd write it. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.